Good morning and welcome to Greece Public Library's book break on this last day of September. Uh, my name is Kirstra. I'm a librarian here at Greece Public Library. I moderate the Pints and Prose book discussion group as well as the virtual science fiction and fantasy book discussion group. And I am here as always with my partner, Claire. Hi, I'm Claire and I moderate the As the Page Turns and also our historical fiction discussion group on Facebook. So. Awesome. And today, I don't think we have a theme. We just have some books that we're going to talk about. Um, yeah. Do you want to start, Claire, or do you want me to start? Sure, I'll start. Um, <laughs> I didn't really intend to go with the theme, but I have gotten all mysteries. So I'm just going to ah, say this secret is theme. Mystery Claire Day. Um, but the first one I'm going to start with is actually Crimson Lake by Candace mm. Fox. And um, I'm going to say if you like Jane Harper or those Australian mysteries, you might want to delve into this series. I started because I really just read the last one, which is Gone okay. by Midnight, but that's number three in mm -hmm. the trilogy, but or not trilogy, but in the series. But I honestly feel like this is one where it's better to kind of start with the beginning because the backstory is so important in who the characters are. Mm. Um, our main character is Ted Conkafee, who is a police officer. He's on like a drug and murder investigation squad. He has gone on a fishing trip. He stops at the side of the road at a bus stop to kind of rearrange his fishing equipment, gets back in the car and leaves. But moments after he's gone, a young girl at the bus stop is brutally assaulted. Um, and he is on cameras having stopped there and is blamed for this. So um, his whole life is forever changed in this moment. His career is in tatters. His wife wants to divorce him. He is dogged by vigilantes, even though um, he is charged but not convicted. Mm. So he, he ends up leaving his life and he goes to this very remote part of Australia called Crimson Lake which is, you can just feel the atmosphere. There are crocodiles in the pond. Um, it's kind of a place where people go where they have nowhere else to go. Mm -hmm. If they kind of want to get out of the main society. Um, so there's one person that actually believes his innocence strongly and that's his attorney. So his attorney wants him to get working, kind of get back his life back on track. So he pairs him up with another outcast in Crimson Lake, who is um, Amanda Farrell. And Amanda was convicted of murder when she was a teenager. She served eight years in a correctional institute. Mm -hmm. And she is quite a character, to say the least. Um, so these two begin working on a case. Um, they have a private investigator business. And um, a prominent local author has gone missing. And what I can liken his books to are that Left Behind series mm -hmm. where there's kind of like apocalyptic. It's very popular with young people because it mixes the Bible and werewolves and such. So anyway, he sold 10 million <laughs> copies and now the man is gone. Um, but the interesting thing about this is the way Ted begins to not only look into their current case, but also he's trying to figure out Amanda. Um, so he's going down an avenue of investigating what really happened because he just, there's too many parts of it that don't jive to him. Um, so he wants to really know what happened on the night that she was convicted of murder. And it is a barn burner reading this book. Um, the next one was, was pretty good, but the third one I thought was the best in the series. But mm. like I said, go to the beginning, start with Crimson Lake, um, Candace Fox is also um, a writer for some of James Patterson's books. Um, not that that's a selling point for oh, okay. me, but she sure. definitely knows how to construct a thriller mm -hmm. mystery. Nice. Um, so yeah, I really, I really enjoy the series and there's something about that whole Australian setting, as you know, because mm -hmm. we're both big Jan <laughs> Harper fans. Yes. Um, that really re resonates with me and lets mm -hmm. me escape to a different place. So yeah, I think that's a lot of it. It's it's so completely different mm -hmm. than 
than our life here in the States. I think that's a big, a big draw for me. Nice. All right. Okay. I'm going to have to definitely add those to my list, my ever growing stat. I know. <laughs> um, so my first book, I don't have a theme. I didn't, I didn't do a theme. Um, but my first book is one that um, I was really excited about. Um, and ultimately, I'm not sure if it quite lived up to the hype for me. So it is Catherine House by Elizabeth Thomas. Um, this is one that was getting a lot of buzz as um, in sort of the horror genre or like horror adjacent, definitely kind of gothic and creepy. So I went into it ready for some gothic and creepy. So the premise is um, Catherine House is a college, essentially. It is very prestigious, kind of mysterious. The deal is so for the people who are accepted, and it's a very small, small school. Um, there's no tuition, no room and board, no fees. Everything is completely paid for. Um, and graduates from Catherine House go on to be um, senators and, you know, politicians and movie stars. And, you know, everyone is super successful um, on the outside after Catherine House. It's basically like a ticket to whatever you want to do with the rest of your life. Um, but the trade-off is that it's three years and you don't leave campus. You don't talk to anyone in the outside world. You're essentially completely cut off and cloistered for the three years while you study there. Um, so our main character, Inez, um, is kind of running from her life. Um, she applied to Catherine House at the urging of a guidance counselor during her junior year, and then her life kind of falls apart during her senior year. And by the time she finds out she's admitted to Catherine House, she really has nowhere else to go. Um, so ends up there, and that's sort of where our story begins. Um, so what I was really looking for, um, I was promised sort of a creeping dread as we start to find out that things at Catherine House are maybe not quite as they seem. The mm -hmm. reason why people aren't allowed to reach out to the outside world is because something's going on in the school that they don't really want anyone to know about. Um, so the things that I thought the book did really well were um, set up kind of the kind of isolation that you that you get not just being cut off from the world, but someone who has no one else. Um, so Inez, our main character, she does make some friends, but she's unmoored in the world. Like she's just kind of- Untethered. Floating. Yes, absolutely. So she's trying to kind of make her way through and resisting um, sort of the pull of Catherine House. Every, it's like kind of a one big happy family um, situation that she doesn't really want any part of, at least at the beginning. Um, so that I thought was really interesting. Um, the, the kids, the other students are really interesting characters. Um, but the thing that I thought the book fell down on a little bit was setting up that what is wrong at the center of the school. Um, I didn't really buy it. I didn't really get it. I don't want to um, spoil too much because other people may have a totally different opinion. Um, and I would love to talk to somebody else that reads it to see kind of what they think about it. So mm -hmm. the setup I thought was really good, but it didn't have the payoff on the back end for me. So It happens. It does. It does. And I was really looking forward to that one. <laughs> So. Sugar pops. Indeed. Well, I'll talk about this one then next. Yeah. Oh, there's my notes for all to see. <laughs> <laughs> Diane Chamberlain, Big Lies in a Small Town. Um, this one I was really looking forward to. I was uh, shelving books and picked it up going, <laughs> oh, this, this sounds like it's right up my alley. It's two stories set in North Carolina. One in 2018, um, Morgan Christopher is, um, she's in jail. Uh, she was in a DWI accident. Um, 
which really was her her boyfriend, but she took the fall because he's going to go off to law school, did not think it would be as as bad as as it was um because she's she's jailed um she gets an offer of freedom from a very unusual place where a woman wants her to fulfill the terms of her father's will mm. um father was an artist that morgan christopher like her favorite artist um so she wants her to restore this mural within a very specific amount of time um to, and she will get probation and be able to, you know, sever her jail sentence. So the mural was created by a young woman from New Jersey in the 1940s. She won a national contest for like murals in public places. Mm -hmm. And instead of getting the post office in New Jersey, she was given Edenton, North Carolina. Um, a town where prejudices run deep and it was a very different sort of town. So she relocates there to live to try to find out more so she can incorporate things from the town in her mural. So both of these characters are connected by this artist, Jesse Jameson Williams. Um, and when Morgan begins to restore the mural, and she has no background in this, so he hmm. picked her very specifically and knew exactly who she was so he wanted her to be the one to do this work. Um, he also has a history of helping like troubled artists or people getting, you know, he was very much uh, a philanthropist mm -hmm. as long as well as a, a very prominent artist. Um, but when she starts restoring the mural, she finds very disturbing things on it that don't really belong like a motorcycle and what she thinks at first is a hatchet and drops of blood. Um, and people said that this, artists had gone crazy and disappeared. They don't know where she is. Um, so there's alternating chapters, some from Anna, the artist, and then some from Morgan as she's restoring. So you get to learn this historical hmm. story line. And um, that I really enjoyed. But like you, it's like when, when it finally got down to business, I just didn't buy how it all mm. tied together. It was a great wrap up and, you know, sure. I couldn't stop reading, but yet mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, I don't think that's quite believable. <laughs> that's just kind of how I felt. Um, so although I enjoyed it, that was a problem for me. Mm -hmm. um, so I'd be interested to see if other people felt the same. Um, it just was all wiped up too neatly and cleanly mm -hmm. for me at the end and just how everyone tied together so perfectly. Um, I don't want to give too much away because that, that adds to the appeal, but yet I kind of felt like it was too much. Mm -hmm. So there you have it. Yeah. I mean, you read enough books, you're going to get some ones that, you know. And I think sometimes <laughs> that's part of the problem. You know, it's like, it's the Claire factor. You know, I start questioning <laughs> everything and, you know, mm -hmm. uh, it's like people won't watch movies with me because I start <laughs> asking questions. And oh, no. Like, Shut up, Claire, you know. <laughs> yeah. But sometimes, but I just, you know. I can't help myself. Absolutely. Um, all right. So my next book, um, I actually liked a lot more than the first one. I thought it held together. Um, so my next book is... The Deep by Rivers Solomon. Rivers Solomon is the author of An Unkindness of Ghosts, which I know I talked about in one of our earlier episodes. It was, I think, the first book that we read for the virtual science fiction and fantasy group on Facebook. Um, so this book has kind of an interesting origin story. Um, so the, the basic story of it is based on um, a song by Clipping, which is a hip hop group um, comprised of David Diggs, William uh, Hudson, and Jonathan Snipes. So the, they're listed as co-authors um, on the book. And that song was commissioned by NPR, This American Life, um, to reimagine um, kind of a mythology created by uh, this band called Drexia, who is a uh, like, techno band out of Detroit. So there's like, um, there's an afterward 
by David Diggs and he kind of likens it to a game of creative telephone. Like you start with one story and then it gets kind of reshaped and expanded into the clipping song. And then that in turn gets sort of reshaped and expanded into the novella of the deep. Um, so I just found that whole creative process fascinating. Um, but the book itself, the, the basic story um, that all three iterations um, start with is uh, it's so the basic premise is what if when um, during the Atlantic slave trade, slaves were often thrown overboard from the ships for various reasons, like they died, they were dying, whatever, they would just get tossed overboard. Um, so the premise is the pregnant slaves who were thrown overboard, um, their babies um, were born into the water as sort of hybrid sea creatures, almost like mermaids. Um, so they're sort of born of this trauma, but create a whole new society in the ocean that's sort of connected to humans, but very different. Um, so that's the basic premise. In the book, um, the main character is Yetu, and she is um, the historian of her people. So the um, most of her people, they don't carry memories of where they came from. They very much just live in the moment. Um, and it's the historian's job to hold all of those memories and to share them when they're needed. So really what we're talking about, in addition to the creation of their society and you know each um, successive generation, we're also talking about the memories of slavery and the slave trade and the traumatic beginnings of their people entirely. So it's a lot to carry. Um, and she decides that she doesn't want to carry it anymore and sort of breaks away. And the rest of the book is her sort of reconciling with this generational trauma and the pain of these memories, um, but also the need for society and connection and the need for history and remembrance. Um, so it's really quite a beautiful book. Um, it's short, it's a novella. Um, and it, if you listen to the song by Clipping, which is available on YouTube to listen to, um, it does follow kind of the same beats of the song, um, but with a new layer kind of wrapped on it. And I just thought it was like nothing I'd read before um, and just really, really beautiful. So highly recommend The Deep by River Solomon. Very different read. You know what I thought of when you were describing it though was The Giver with the whole mm -hmm. memories yeah. thing and, and that yeah. important piece of a society. So mm -hmm. yeah, it would be interesting. I am also, as I told you before, like I, I love David Diggs, you know, mm -hmm. I loved him in Hamilton. So I would be really interested. You know, I didn't even have any idea that he was in a hip hop group. So. Yeah. Yeah. They've got a couple of albums. Um, Hoopla has a couple of them. Um, Sound and Misery is a good one. It's kind of like a um, sci-fi hip hop concept album. It's, it's really interesting. <laughs> and again, very different. It, um, it's not your sort of run of the mill hip hop. Yeah. So worth a listen. Interesting. Yeah. My list keeps growing. I <laughs> wanted to read her first one that you talked about. So, so, good. so, yeah. so good. So you don't have to read one for the other. They're two totally no, different. No, completely concepts. unconnected. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, here I am with another series. <laughs> um, I have really been wanting to read this author for a while. This is Anne Cleves. This is The Darkest Evening, and this is her newest book in the Vera Stanhope series. Um, I don't know if most of you realize that when we first had our, our you know, quarantine and COVID, I signed up for BritBox, immediately fell into the dark hole that was Shetland. 
uh, which is another series written by Ann Cleves. And then when I finished that, I delved into Vera because mm -hmm. I just had a thing for those British mysteries, you know? Um, so I was really, you know, I don't know if I was supposed to read them. Oh, I certainly wasn't supposed to read them out of turn, but I did anyway. <laughs> um, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, in the darkest evening, you know, I kind of felt like since I'd watched the shows, I could picture Vera, mm -hmm. you know, driving in the snow, going off the road. Um, and that's what happens. It's, it sets up where Vera is driving home. It's a horrible storm. She becomes discombobulated, lost, disoriented, and she discovers a car off the road in front of her. And um, the door is open and there's a toddler inside. She can't find any trace or footprints of, of who left this child in the car. So she takes the child out of the car, puts it in her car, and then becomes aware of her surroundings as she starts to drive that she is going to a large country home called Brockburn, which ironically is where her father grew up. Hmm. Um, so she, Inside is a party that is going full swing, like a Christmas, it's like around the holiday time. Um, and then when a farmer arrives on a tractor to pick up his two young daughters who are serving at the party, um, very much like it's in the northern part of England, the, the, uh -huh. the country seat you know, of the, the local uh -huh. lord and the people still have farms and everything around him. And that's what one of you know, this farmer is, is almost like a tenant farmer. So he discovers a body outside. Well, then the whole thing starts to begin because it is discovered that it's a young woman that once lived in the town. So why was she there? You know, how are these events all related? You know, is it someone in Vera's family that could be responsible? Um, so many British upper-class family secrets uh, the question of the toddler, like the mother was always very secretive about who the father was, trying mm -hmm. to discover the, the parentage of this child. Um, so yeah, it was all very good. And once I started reading, I just couldn't stop, you know, I had to mm -hmm. find out the mystery. But so nice. Anne Cleves, I definitely want to read more Anne Cleves. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, she's been on my list for a while. Um, mm -hmm but I haven't read anything yet. And I do think maybe um, in the, maybe this winter, we should do um, a book break goes to the movies or like goes to TV and yeah. a TV break and talk about, cause I know you and I both have um, a love of the, <laughs> of the British mysteries. Yeah, oh, definitely. So, yeah, I think that would be fun. Nice, okay. Um, so my last one, is Everything I Never Told You by Celeste Ng, um, also the author of Little Fires Everywhere, which I also read and really enjoyed. Um, so this is, um, it's a family drama um, in kind of the same way that Little Fires Everywhere is a family drama. Like it's really looking at the relationships between, um, between people and that sort of propels everything that happens in the story. Um, so in this story, um, the very first lines, like the opening of the book is, Lydia is dead, but they don't know it yet. Um, and we learn that Lydia is the oldest daughter of James and Marilyn. Um, the book takes place, uh, the main action of Lydia and her death and disappearance happens in um, the late 70s, um, mid to late 70s. Um, and the rest of the action, there's a lot of flashing back to James and Marilyn and the beginning of their relationship, which happens in um, the late 50s and early 60s. Um, so James is Chinese American. Um, he is, uh, so the book also takes place in Ohio, which is the same setting of Little Fires Everywhere. Um, and James is like always and forever the only Asian person in the room, basically anywhere he goes. Um, and that has sort of shaped a lot of his outlook on the world. Um, mm -hmm. Marilyn is 
white. She grew up a very sort of typical white middle class upbringing. Um, and the two of them fall in love um, after they meet. James is a professor of history and Lydia, or not Lydia, sorry, Marilyn, the mother, um, signs up to take one of his classes. So they meet in class, um, they fall in love, they get married. Um, and it's an interesting look at um, an interracial relationship when they were very much not the norm. Um, and then their children, they have three children, Lydia, Nathan, and Hannah um, are biracial. They're half Asian, half white. And they are, again, the only Asian kids in their school, the only biracial kids in their school. And it's, um, and so there's a lot of looking at sort of how the kids sort of straddle those two worlds. And then the very different perspectives that their mother and their father bring to that, like the, the white parent and the Asian parent. Um, so there's really a lot of exploration of, um, you know, how different perspectives sort of shape um, your reactions to things and your perceptions. Mm -hmm. um, and then also there's a lot about how parents sort of put their own expectations onto their children mm -hmm. um, in a way that is not always healthy. Um, and it's, so it's a really sad book in a lot of ways. I mean, Lydia dies, <laughs> like we know that from the very beginning. And you, the author does a great job of sort of building up how she got to the point where she died. And there's a lot of ambiguity about um, whether it was suicide, whether there was someone else involved. Um, but the everything I never told you really refers to um, a lot of that baggage that we bring to our relationships, either with a partner or with our children, just the assumptions that we have and how that can um, really damage a relationship between two people. Um, wow. So sad in a lot of ways, but beautifully written. And um, it's not all just a joyless bummer. Like there, there is some hopefulness at the end. Um, but uh, I really, really liked it. It would be another great discussion book. Um, I, I actually tried to get my book group to read that one. Yeah. Um, couldn't get them to go for it, but it's been on my list for a long time. Yeah. And as you know, you know, I have, a lot of personal connection that would make that story interesting. So, mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah, some good ones, some mediocre ones, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> a lot to read as always. So, uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, so our next book break is going to be in a couple of weeks in October. And I think we're talking about horror books next time, right? Or scary books. Yeah, I'm going to do my best. <laughs> Player the big old chicken talking about yeah. scary books. So. Well, but you know, your scary and my scary might be two different yeah. levels of scary or kinds of scary. So I think that that works just fine. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So we will see you in a couple of weeks. And please do let us know in the comments um, if you've read any of the books that we talked about. We would love to hear your opinions. We always want to know what you're reading and whether you're reading the same things that we are and what you think about it. So yep. drop us a comment and we will see you next time. Take care.